In this tutorial, we'll generalize our viewpoint of electrical circuits as a relationship between voltage and current at some set of terminals in the circuit. We've been modeling electrical circuits as a relationship between voltage and current at a pair of terminals for some time now. Ohm's law, for example, provides a relation between the voltage and current at the terminals of a resistor. V is equal to I times R. Likewise, when we determined equivalent resistance, we were simply determining a relationship between voltage and current at the terminals of a resistive network. The equivalent resistance of the network was simply the ratio of the voltage to the current at the terminals of the network. Now, we're going to add power sources to our network of resistors and see that the relationship between voltage and current at the terminals of the network still describes the behavior of the circuit. Here's an example circuit we used in one of our Chapter 2 videos. The point at that time was we could determine an equivalent resistance for this overall circuit. This equivalent resistance simply described the relationship between the voltage and the current at the terminals of the network, so that voltage is equal to the equivalent resistance times the current. Experimentally, we could apply a voltage and measure the resulting current. The resistance of the circuit is simply the ratio of the voltage to the current at the terminals. In fact, if we applied a number of different voltages at the terminals and measured the resulting currents for each voltage, we could plot the relationship between voltage and current. The slope of the resulting line is the equivalent resistance. There's an important thing to note about this relationship. The y-intercept of the line is zero. So if we open circuit the two terminals so that the current is zero, we'll get a zero voltage across the terminals. This makes sense. The circuit doesn't contain any sources, so if we don't apply a source across the terminals, we can't get any current into the terminals. This observation is summarized by the statement that the open circuit voltage across the terminals is zero. Now, let's look at the effect of adding some sources to the circuit we want to characterize. For example, consider this circuit. We have several resistors and a two volt source. It turns out that if we apply a voltage and measure a current across the terminals, we can generate a relationship between this applied voltage and the resulting current, just as we did with the source-free circuit. Unlike the previous circuit, we will not necessarily get a zero voltage if we open circuit the terminals. The two volt source will generally result in a non-zero open circuit voltage. The process of measuring this voltage current characteristic is the same as we did in chapter two, but now we need to make sure that we measure both an equivalent resistance, the slope of this line, and an open circuit voltage, the y-intercept of this line. Now let's wire up this circuit, make our measurements, and see what the resulting characteristic is. We'll measure our characteristic using both of the approaches we've used previously. We can measure voltage and current independently and calculate a resistance, or we can apply a time-varying voltage to the circuit and use our oscilloscope to plot the voltage current characteristic. One additional thing that we will do in this tutorial, which we haven't done previously, is to export our voltage current characteristic to a file and use Microsoft Excel to determine a best fit line approximating the data. This will give us an easy approach to determining the equivalent resistance and the open circuit voltage of the circuit. Here's our implemented circuit. Our two volt fixed voltage supply is applied with AWG2. This is our 2.2 kilo ohm resistor. This is the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor that connects our input terminal to our other two resistors. This one kilo ohm resistor connects this terminal to ground. We're applying the input voltage with AWG1 the terminals of the DMM are being used to measure our input current. The input voltage is measured by channel one of our voltmeter. In our first approach towards measuring the characteristic, we'll measure the open circuit voltage explicitly, then we'll estimate the slope of the curve which will give us the equivalent resistance. To measure the open circuit voltage, as the name implies, simply disconnect the voltage source so that now the input terminals are open circuited, turn on power, we're applying two volts with our fixed power supply, and we're measuring an open circuit voltage of approximately 0.62 volts. Now to estimate the resistance, we measure the current for two different input voltages. Reconnecting AWG1 and setting the input voltage to three volts results in an input current of about 0.44 milliamps. 
Now, if we increase our input voltage to 5 volts, we measure an input current of approximately 0 0.82 milliamps. From these two points, we can estimate the slope of the curve. So our equivalent resistance is simply the slope of this line. REQ is the difference in voltage, 5 volts minus 3 volts, over the difference in current, 0 0.82 milliamps minus 0 0.44 milliamps, which results in an equivalent resistance of approximately 5.26 kilo ohms. In our second approach towards measuring the characteristic, we're going to use our oscilloscope and a time-varying waveform to estimate the current going into the input terminals and measure the voltage into the input terminals. We can then use our oscilloscope to plot the voltage current characteristic. So all we've really done is added an additional voltage measurement, channel 2 of our oscilloscope, across the 4.6 kilo ohm resistor. This voltage difference divided by 4.6 will be the current into the input terminals in milliamps. Let's turn on power and see what we get. We have a triangular wave at 2 hertz being applied at the input and our usual fixed 2 volt supply inside the circuit itself. Turning on power, in our oscilloscope we have our main window as we did before, we have set up a math channel which takes channel 2 divided by 4.6. This will give us our input current in milliamps. So this curve here is our voltage current characteristic. Its y-intercept is approximately 0.6 volts. But let's export the data, use Excel to plot it and do a least squares curve fit. I will save this as demo.csv. Now let's open up the data in Excel, do a curve fit, and see what our y-intercept and our equivalent resistance are. Okay, here's our data. There's a header here. None of this we need in order to plot the data. We're going to plot these two. We'll insert a scatter plot. There's our plot. Under layout, we can determine a trend line for this curve, which, if we do a linear trend line, will give us a least squares straight line fit to the data. We can also display the line that is being fit. Our line is 0 0.6277 plus 5.27 times x. That means the open circuit voltage that we're determining is about 0.63 volts. Our equivalent resistance is about 5.3 kilo ohms. That's very close to the results that we got earlier, except this approach was easier.